Welcome, Return to Castle Wolfenstein Mappers. In this video, my computer rig is a simple PC with Windows 11. I already have Return to Castle Wolfenstein and the modification Real Artist CV installed on my computer. It might surprise you that I'll begin by uninstalling Return to Castle Wolfenstein. I also delete the Return to Castle Wolfenstein folder from my Steam installation. If there are any files or maps you want to keep, save them in a separate folder for now. Further, I will also go into my Windows Users Document folder. Windows, User, and your username, Documents. And simply delete the Return to Castle Wolfenstein folder. Next, I will also uninstall the Real Artist CV modification. And I'll also delete the Real Artist CV folder from my Steam installation. Finally, I'll also delete the Real Artist CV folder from my Documents folder. There are two reasons for this. One, we clean the computer, remove any files that might interfere with the mapping. Secondly, now we will get the latest patches and updates. Next, I reinstall Return to Castle Wolfenstein. This classic game from 2001. Finally, I reinstall Real Artist CV. And at the time of the recording of this video, it's version 4. Now follow me. Before we do anything else, I want you to take a look inside the Real Artist CV folder. Steam Apps, Common, Real Artist CV. Open the main folder. Please note that there are no folders here. I'll come back to this in a minute. Next, go back to the Real Artist CV folder and open the SDK folder. Go inside the Mapping folder and open the NetRadiant Custom folder. Scroll down and double-click the Radiant.exe to launch the Level Editor. Set the game path to your Real Artist CV folder. Steam Apps, Common, Real Artist CV. Select Folder and click OK to execute. And now you've started the level editor NetRadiant Custom. Surprisingly, I want you to close it right now. Go back to the Real Artist CV folder, Steam Apps, Common, Real Artist CV. Open the main folder. Two folders were automatically created by the level editor when it was first launched. Open the scripts folder. Open the text file shaderlist.txt. And look for the word sky. If the word sky isn't there, I add it manually. Just write the word sky on a separate line. Save and close the text file. Technically, it works like this. Each time the level editor starts, it checks this list. If the shader is on the list, it will show up in the editor and you can use it when mapping. Next, we need to fix some more things. Go to SDK, Mapping, NetRadiant Custom, Game Packs, RealRTCV.game, Main. And copy these three files. Common, 
lights and skies. Paste them into this folder, RealRTCV main. Now it's time to start the editor again by going back to the NetRadion custom folder. And double clicking on the radiant.exe to launch it. In the menu, click Edit and select Preferences. Under Settings, select Nudge and Load Lost Map. Under Texture Browser, select Load Shaders Common. And also select Hide Non-Shaders in the Common folder. Finally, under Autosave, change to 5 minutes. Double-click Common and select Cork. In the 2D window on the left, click and drag to create a so-called brush. In the 3D window, right-click and use the keyboards A, S, D and W keys or the arrow keys on your keyboard to fly around in the map. Then click anywhere or press the escape key on your keyboard to deselect the object. It's time to set up my own mapping project. And remember, this is how I do it. There are other ways to do it, but this works best for me. Go to the Windows User folder and the folder named Documents. Now there will be a new RealRTCV folder here. Open it and take a look. There's one folder here named Main. It works like this. Each time the real RTCV modification starts, it will look inside this main folder. It will read the files. Open it. And you'll see a save folder. However, we don't need this save folder for mapping. But just leave it as it is. You don't have to delete it. Instead, create a new folder and name it Maps. This is where we will save our map file. Let us go back to the editor, click File, and save your map file. And as I said, we'll navigate to the Windows User folder and the folder named Documents. Then to the main folder and the maps folder. And in this example, I'll name the map file Genesis. But you can, of course, call your map whatever you want. Above the texture list, click the View button, which looks like an eye. Select Show Shader, Show Textures, Shader List Only, and finally, Hide Image Missing. And there you have it. You've successfully set up NetRadiant Custom with Real RTCV version 4, laying the groundwork for your exciting mapping journey. Remember, even the most experienced mappers started as beginners, and you're now well on your way. You've equipped yourself with the tools and knowledge needed to create custom maps in Return to Castle Wolfenstein. In upcoming videos, we'll dive deeper into the world of mapping, exploring advanced techniques, scripting, creative map design, etc. Mostly etc. If you found this tutorial helpful, don't forget to like, subscribe, and, well, you know, the, you know the drill. Share it. Your support encouraged me to create more tutorials.
If you have any questions or suggestions, please feel free to leave a comment below. I'm here to help you on your mapping journey. Thanks for joining today and get ready for more exciting mapping adventures ahead. Happy mapping! I'll see you in the next video.